today and welcome to the second video on the applications of differentiation and calculus. This is exercise 6.2 from the textbook. Um, in this video we're begin, going to be looking at the stationary points and how we find stationary points and also um, how we find the nature of the stationary points, uh, being maximum, minimums or point of inflections. So to find a stationary point, um, we know that the gradient at this particular point is equal to zero, okay, and that's the key uh, to all of this. Um, and then, you know, in order to find out the nature of the stationary point, um, we need to know the gradient um, value either side of the stationary point. Um, it will either tell us that it's a local minimum, a local maximum, or a point of inflection. Okay, so if we look at um, a particular point, um, let's just call that point A, and we know that the gradient when x is equal to A, the gradient is equal to zero. So we know that it's a stationary point when x is equal to A. Okay, I've got an example later on to kind of show you that in a little bit more. So I know that the gradient, um, you know, these values on this table here, all these values down here are gradients. Um, I know when x equals to a, um, there's a gradient of, of zero. Okay. Um, now, if we look just to the left of this particular point of x equals a, so you know when x is less than a, um, so just to the left and then just to the right when x is greater than or equal to a, uh, so greater than a. What we can do is we, we can identify um, you know, what kind of um, a gradient the, the graph has. If it has a positive gradient to the left of um, this point A and a negative gradient after this point A, then what we can say that, that we have a local maximum at that particular point. Okay, So if the graph is doing something like this, um, it's a positive gradient and then a zero gradient and then a negative gradient, it's going to look like a local maximum like this. Okay. If we have a local minimum, um, we will have a negative gradient before the um, x equals to a. We'll have a zero gradient at x equals to a, obviously, and then a positive gradient um, after x is equal to a. And so therefore, we'll have a local minimum. Okay. Now, for a point of inflection, we'll either have a positive gradient, a zero gradient, and then another positive gradient, or a negative gradient, a zero gradient, and then another negative gradient along the way. Okay, so these are the ways we, we identify whether a, um, a stationary point is a, a local minimum, local maximum, or point of inflection. Um, let, let me go to an example just to, to kind of help you out a little bit. So I've, I've got this graph here, um, f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x plus 2, and it says to find the stationary points of the following function. Okay, that's the first thing I need to do. So I, uh, to do this, I find the derivative and make it equal to 0. Okay, and so I go about that. Um, so f dash x is um, 3x squared plus 6x minus 9, um, you know, multiplied by the, um, the power minus 1 from the power. And then I make that equal to 0, and I try and solve for x. And so I divide everything by 3, because there's a common factor of 3, and then I use the cross method or, or whatever other method, and I get x plus 3, x minus 1. So I know that it, when x equals negative 3 and x equals 1, that this graph has a stationary point. Okay, it's not moving up or down at that particular point. But I don't know what kind of stationary point it is. I can kind of guess if I look at a cubic graph, um, and I know it's a positive cubic graph, I might have some sort of idea. Um, but let's just sort of prove it. Um, so I, I'm actually just finding the stationary point in, in this particular one. So I found the x value of the stationary point, and I need to find the y value. To find the y value, I simply sub x back in. And I get, um, when I sub substitute x as 1 back into this equation, I get the answer of negative 3. Um, and when I substitute negative 3 into this equation, um, I get the answer of 29. Um, you, know, you can have a look at that if you want to, but just sort of believe me that that's, uh, that's true. So the stationary points that I've got are, in fact, 1 and negative 3. That's one stationary point. And the other one is negative 3, 29. Now, if I actually graph those, um, I guess let me just do a quick graph up here. Um, negative 3, 29 is up there, and then 1, negative 3 is, is down there. And I know that there's a positive cubic graph, so I know that it must do something like this. I can actually tell that 1's a maximum and 1's a minimum, or local maximum and local minimum. But I guess I want to actually prove that for myself. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. That's what I'm going to do in my part B. I'm going to find this, the nature of the stationary points um, that I've previously found. So I'm going to do them uh, one at a time. And I'm going to get um, this point here, when x is 1 and y equals negative 3. Um, to find the nature, I need to actually substitute it back into the gradient function, um, not into the, uh, the original function. So I know when x is 1, the gradient is 0. 
Okay, and I'm just interested um, to the left of, of this, um, so I'm going to choose the point zero, and to the right, I'm going to choose the point two. I could have chosen 1.9, oh, sorry, 0 0.9 and 1.1 if I wanted to, but it's easier to substitute in whole numbers. So I'm going to substitute zero into my uh, gradient function, and when I get the derivative, um, zero, zero, I'm going to get negative nine. I actually don't care what number it is, I just care that it's a negative gradient. It was negative nine but a negative gradient is the thing that I care about. Um, when I substitute two in, um, I'm gonna get, you know, it's for 12 plus a positive number minus a negative, you know, minus nine, I'm gonna get a positive number. I don't care actually what it is, um, but it will be a positive number. Okay, so I know that at the point at the, the, the point one negative three, which is a stationary point, I'm going to have a negative gradient, a zero gradient, and a positive gradient. So therefore, this one, I can say that this one is going to be a local minimum. Okay. Now I'm gonna have a look at this um, other one. Um, when x is negative three, I know that the gradient is equal to zero. Um, when x is negative two, let's substitute that one in first. Um, negative two, well that's gonna be a positive number. Um, that's going to be a negative number. And I think those two things are exactly the same. And then I minus nine, so I'm going to get a negative number. You can actually do the calculations if you want to, but all I care about is that it's a negative number. Let me just write that a little bit clearer. Okay, it's negative. Okay, when I substitute negative four in, um, I'm gonna get, that's gonna be a positive number and three times uh, 16 will be very positive. Minus 24 minus nine, it's still gonna be a positive number. Okay, so for this particular one, I've got a positive gradient, a zero gradient, and then a negative gradient. So this one is going to be a local maximum. Okay, now people get a little bit confused with this. Um, you know, which, you know, do you substitute it back into the gradient function or into the original function? I've got a little flow diagram here to kind of help, it, help us out a little bit. If I have a stationary point, um, this uh, has an x value and a y value. To get the x value of the stationary point, I make the derivative equal to zero. So find the derivative, make it equal to zero, and solve for x. Now I can do two things. One, I can find out the y value. And if I want to find out the y value, I substitute this x value back into my original function, and then I will get the y value. If I want to find out the nature of the stationary point, I can substitute this x value back into the derivative f, f dash x and find out what that is. Now clearly if I substitute that x value back into the derivative function, um, I'm gonna get the answer of zero because that's what I proved before. But I guess what we can do with this is we can actually look to the left of it and also to the right as well. Okay, and then this will tell us you know, the nature of the stationary point. I guess the only other thing I wanna say is that you need to be careful when you're finding a point to the left and a point to the right, because sometimes the two stationary points can actually be very, very close to each other. Um, so for example, if I have something like this and I've got two stationary points there and there, let's just say at one and at uh, 1.5, if I choose a point to the right of one, I might choose two, and, um, and then I'll choose uh, um, you know, a point to the left, which is zero, I'm actually gonna be skewed because it could do something like this. I could have a, um, a minimum, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, a minimum and then a maximum going through that point. If I choose two, I'm actually gonna get a, a negative gradient over here. So um, I, ne I need to be really careful to make sure that I don't you know, jump over the next stationary point. Um, and I guess it's, there's no real way of, of knowing how to do that, except to, to have a look at your original stationary points here, um, one negative three and negative three, 29, and, and to make sure that you don't, I guess, leap over the other one um, so that you, you, you do get a point to the right and to the left that's not impacted by the previous stationary point. It's much easier to sub in whole numbers. It's much easier to sub in um, zeros and, and low numbers as well. Um, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea as to how to, to manage these types of uh, questions. So uh, thanks very much. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Um, have a look at your textbook. It has a couple more examples. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.